A colaboração de hoje é mais do que especial. Em vez de começar na minha cozinha, estou começando no aeroporto. É que hoje eu vim buscar o chefe britânico Sven Hansen, que foi um dos finalistas do Masterchef Professionals da Inglaterra. Agora é só esperar ele sair ali do portão de desembarque. Eu trouxe o Sven aqui para o Mercado Público de Porto Alegre, que é um dos meus lugares preferidos no mundo, e vou mostrar para ele as várias coisas que a gente tem aqui a oferecer. E aí, ele vai pensar no que, que ele vai fazer para nós hoje. Você já provou o bucha? Não, eu nunca vi. Eu nunca vi. Eu amo. Eu vou comprar bucha para o Sven, que ele nunca comeu, agora está comendo pela primeira vez. Como você se sente? É um perfume acidente, muito acidente. Sim, eu amo isso. Eu vou levar uns figuinhos também, que eles estão super na época agora. E eles são maravilhosos. Então, a gente está comprando uh, o coco seco para fazer a basezinha da torta e mini forminhas super bonitinhas. O Sven nunca comeu banana passa, então eu comprei orgânica para ele provar. E aí agora... Oh, muito obrigada. É isso. Hum. So good. Now, we've shopped everything, we've got some Brazilian sparkling wine, exactly. we're ready to go home and cook. First, I want to ask you something like really, um, what everyone must ask you about your experience on MasterChef yeah. Professionals. Um, yeah, MasterChef was amazing, it was a really good journey, a really good challenge. I would be really afraid. Um, I think we'd be really on the edge and... It's, uh, it's quite scary, um, but it's not as scary as my job at, oh, that, really? I, that I had at the time. That was, um, that was uh, really stressful. We had to cook for um, lots of high-end celebrities, royal family, all sorts of stuff like really? that. So really? everything just has to be perfect. It was a kitchen where everything had to be perfect all the time. And that's why it was amazing. It was amazing working at the Ritz. It, um, it's really good to have something, someone really to... to but you were the chef there? Um, no, uh, um, I was I was one of 70 chefs. Um, wow! And I spent eight years there, so I kind of worked my way up to sous chef eventually. Uh, since when do you cook professionally? Um, so I started working in restaurants when I was 14. 14? Yeah. You are allowed to work at 14? Um, part time. You're, I started at, um, um, in when you're in school in England, you have a thing we called. Um, Oh, I can't remember the name, but it's like you're, you spend two weeks going out into work um, and to learn what the real world is like, to wow, learn about work this is really nice. after school. So I chose a restaurant um, and then I loved it there. Um, my very first day, or well, my very first evening, I, I was there washing some plates and scrubbing some potatoes. And um, It was in the evening, it was late night, it was later than normally when I go to sleep and everyone was swearing and it was really hot and everyone was running around. And I thought, God, this is crazy. This is, this is, this is the best crazy. place ever. Yeah, it's amazing. And then um, everyone was swearing. I, I was just like. When you're 14, yeah. watching a lot of men uh, running around and swearing. You've worked in mainly male kitchens. Yeah, it is that way. Yeah. It's still like that? In yeah, it's, um, it's changing now. Um, there's lots of uh, female chefs, chefs and some amazing female chefs in Europe and the UK at the moment. Yeah. But um, yeah, that was kind of that's where I started when I was 14, 15 and then working after school, kind of most days. And then wow. I got my um, apprenticeship at the Ritz, um, which was the most amazing experience I and opportunity. Imagine. So I stayed there for nearly eight years. Um, and in between that, I went to France for a year. Um, so I, went, I was at the Ritz for five years, then I went to France, and then I, um, wow. then I went back to the Ritz, then I did MasterChef, and then I've done all sorts since then, and I'm actually opening my own restaurant at the really? moment. Um, in a place called Derbyshire, which is, two hours or three hours north of London um, well, if you drive and it's on a farm 
So it's an old rundown farm which I am um, renovating, turning back into a working farm. We're planting loads of vegetables and fruit. Um, Perfect. And I'm only going to cook the food that I grow. Yeah. You're doing my dream. Um, Good. Yeah, I, wanna, dream I have too. to go there so, and check yeah, it out. Please do. Então, eu tô aqui com várias coisas que a gente comprou no mercado público. Eu fiz um mate para compartilhar com os fãs, mas eu, como diz a tradição, eu tô tomando primeiro e depois vou passar para ele. Já tá quase acabando. Enquanto isso, ele vai explicar mais ou menos o que ele vai fazer. Hi guys. Right. So, I'm going to show you something traditionally English, a really English tart. It's called a Bakewell tart from a tiny village called Bakewell. Um, and traditionally it's uh, made with strawberry jam and almond paste. But we've got some amazing Brazilian ingredients that we found at the market. So we're going to utilize those. So we're going to, we've got some uh, banana raisins, which are, what's the um, Portuguese? Pasta de banana. Oh, that's good, that's beautiful. And um, some figs and some... Bucha. Bucha. And instead of the almond flour, we're going to use coconut flour, which is uh, going to give it kind of a Brazilian twist. So it's going to be really interesting, um, based on an English uh, tart, but with uh, all the Brazilian flavor. And it should be really good. We're going to, it's got a base of sweet pastry, and then we're going to put the figs in, and then we're going to make uh, the frangipan from the coconut and the eggs and some sugar. Mm. I really like it. Yeah, I, it's I'm, gonna be I'm, good. I'm looking forward to trying it. 